But what I actually wanted to watch was this. Bro, this guy's intro is way too loud. Like the, the, the hi-hats are way too loud. Yamaha is a unique company in that when you hear the name, you think of one of two things, music or motorcycles. You'd be wrong in saying that. Well, also they have like jet skis and stuff and they do exhaust systems for cars and uh, they have like, for example, the Yamaha HS2s, I believe they're HS2s or HS12s or whatever, they're the studio monitors. They make a lot of MIDI equipment, um, audio equipment, things like that. That's all the company does, and I'll get to that, but these are the two things they're most known for, and it's weird, right? These two things aren't related in any way. I wouldn't imagine the two are helping each other very much. Well, actually, they are, and this is what I wanted to talk about. They really are. I want to see what he says, but it's shocking. It's weird, because people who are out of the loop don't understand the business that Yamaha is in. They don't understand it, because uh, they think like, oh, these two things are unrelated. Yamaha is not in the business of pianos. They're not in the business of motorcycles. Yamaha is in the business of tuning. You see, that's what they're in the business of. Whether it be for drivers or for drivers, both kinds, you know, computer drivers, they're in the business of tuning. That's that's what Yamaha does. But um, they're I want to see what this guy has to say because people, I, I, it's interesting to see what people out of the loop have to say about a thing that you know about. Completely different industries. Here's what I mean. If you're really happy about your Yamaha piano and now you're looking to buy a new guitar, you're likely to seek out one made by Yamaha because whatever you liked about your piano, you're expecting to see it in the guitar. Well, mm, not really. Guitars are a very, very different industry. Uh, I guess if you're playing acoustic, if you're playing like, guitar like this and you're not um you're not necessarily making music with it where you're recording the actual uh uh data from the guitar and plugging it into an amp and then plugging that into a, a mixer or interface and then having that plugged into a computer to record it on digital audio workstation if you're not doing all that then sure maybe you might look at the same company but it's usually companies that specialize in specific instruments like a like people are like, oh, I want a Stradivarius violin. Nobody, does Stradivarius even make other instruments? Do they make pianos? So it's 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 actually a very different thing. Guitar, the quality or the sound or whatever. The name carries a reputation in the industry. But now imagine. But that's the thing. It's actually very very different. You might think that from when you're coming from a business perspective because this guy talks about a lot of businesses. So he doesn't come from a music perspective. He comes from a business perspective. If you really think about it, you might think that guitars and, and pianos are very are very similar industries. And, and they are in a way because they're customer base, but they're very similar. They're not similar products at all. And that's because instruments are not necessarily, um, instruments don't derive from, from a, a synthetic sort of mechanical way of, of going like, okay, we wanna make this sound what instruments should we make? Those are called speakers. They're called speakers and synthesizers. That's what that is, by the way. If you if you wanted to like, um, if there was a company that made a good uh, synthesizer, you would want to buy a speaker from them as well. That makes sense because you'd want to get exactly what they intended out of it, um, if they made a good product at least. But different the, these instruments, the guitar and the flute and the violin and the piano and a harp, pianos come from harps actually. It's a harpsichord instrument. If you look at a piano actually, this is a harp. You'll notice if you take this and move it sideways, that's a harp. Um, and the, the only difference is they're just hammers hitting the strings now. That's really all it is. It, it's a harp, it's the harpsichord family of instruments and the piano is the most popular instrument in that family. But these instruments come from nature. There's literally a 40,000 year old flute. Look at this, look at this, 40, thousand year old flute the bone flute made out of bone the fact that people figured out you can well i guess the bones are already hollowed out because you know bone marrow but the fact that people figured out that you can make holes cover them with your fingers and create different fuck but you get what i'm saying um the fact that people figured that out forty thousand years ago is is mind-blowing and different cultures figured out different instruments 
these are not instruments where they all had like an idea in mind like we want to make music. These are instruments that emerged from nature because people would just play around with the tools in their environment just from tool usage. And they'd go like, hey, this makes an interesting sound. Let's maybe modify it around and do this stuff and do this stuff. And then after like another thousand years, they're like, oh, it makes an even better sound. Oh, it makes an even more controlled sound. Oh, I can do this type of sound. And then over time, it ends up being like that. The The properties of a of the product of the violin of the a piano versus a guitar are totally, totally, totally different. They just both happen to make music. That's the only similarity they have. They both happen to make music, but they're totally different. If someone has good build quality with pianos, you're not going to want to buy a guitar from them just because they have good build quality with pianos. That's not how it works. It's a different company, a different culture that's going to make both. So you'd actually, there's companies that you look for for a piano, like Yamaha, and there's companies that you look for for every other instrument because they specialize in those instruments that they make because one of them's made out of wood, the other one's made out of, I guess they're all made out of wood now, but um, I mean, I guess the flute was made out of bone, literally back then, but um, that's interesting. I wish I could find that. I, I, I would so buy that bone, that bone flute, iconic, legendary, probably have it in a museum or something, but... Yeah, it doesn't, it, in terms of like what product it is and how it's made and everything, it doesn't translate the same way it does for like, man, Toyota makes a good, you know, car. They probably make a good SUV. No, it's not the same thing. Not at all. It's like, it's like a car versus running shoes. Like they both happen to take you, they both happen to do the same thing. Just because people in different cultures wanted to do the same thing, which is get to places further and safer. But you can't, they're two totally different products made in totally different ways using totally different materials. Happy about your Yamaha piano, and now you're looking to buy a new guitar, you're likely to seek out one made by Yamaha. No, no. That's what I, I just described. That's not, you don't do this at all. And besides, you don't necessarily, there's not much tuning that needs to go on in a guitar. People buy guitars because they're aesthetic before, above anything else, honestly. And people who don't, they're lying to themselves because whatever you liked about your- uh, I mean, I, if your budget is over $2,000, anything beyond that, you're doing it for aesthetics. Piano, you're expecting to see it in the guitar, the quality or the sound or whatever. The name carries a reputation in the industry. But now, imagine you're looking to buy a new motorcycle. The fact that you like your Yamaha piano probably isn't factoring into your decision very much. Actually, it is. It is. Because they're in the business of tuning. If at all, you know, I, I've heard from, I've heard from, you know, the car guys at Donut Media, as well as like the audiophile guys like Joshua Velour, they both say there's no replacement for displacement. And isn't that kind of weird? Like there's, there's a link between motor vehicle combustion engines and musical instruments. It's actually a much stronger link than you guys would think. Like... At the core of both of these art forms is a singular common goal. It's a common intention. It's, it's, it's an understanding and that you wouldn't understand it unless you're a part of it. Like what do people look for when buying amps or DACs? They look for range and performance. What do people look for when buying engines? Range and performance. Like if, if you look at it, like every, <clears throat> every normie, like they, uh, you know, they think that like Beats and Bose, they make great headphones, whatever. And they also think that like they'd want a Lamborghini if they were buying like a nice performance car or whatever, right? Um, a Lamborghini is not a, Lamborghini is actually a great performance car. They think they want like, they think a Maserati is a good performance car. They think that's a good choice, you know? These people are not car people. Um, and like all of like people who are not music people, they would still love, like everybody has an artistic bone in them, you know, like they, they would love to learn to sing. Like everybody wants to learn to sing. I can't, I don't know a single person who thinks it would not be a valuable skill or at least like a fun thing to do during karaoke, you know, <clears throat> and, and also people, I know a lot of people who like would love to learn to play the guitar, but they don't want to go through that like time commitment, even though it's not really that much of a time commitment. You could literally self-teach yourself <clears throat> and it's not even that big of a deal. You can learn it in a year, solid in a year. But, um, and actually the guy who was going to teach me guitar, he 
every time he comes over here, you know, we talk about, we talk about cars. We talk about the, the Subaru WRX that I had or the, the uh, Nissan 370Z that he had or like the GTR and things like we talk about like, he's like, oh, I'm lowering it. I'm putting a roll bar in there. I'm putting a racing harness. And he, he does all the stuff to his car. He has like a crazy exhaust system on there and all that. It's like <clears throat> people don't realize how like most people who get into a passion, they only get into one passion, right? They don't really go into any real depth on multiple different passions. That's very rare. Um, but there are times where there's overlap. And it seems to be like kind of arbitrary if you're outside of the loop. I can't think of any right now, but um, there are things where like this seemingly unrelated thing actually relates to this kind of thing simply because of the proclivities that a person has to get into one will also translate into the other. And that exists. <clears throat> like if, if you go deep into cars, I mean, bro, you're in cars all day. You're probably looking to have a good sound system. You know, you probably know about sound systems. You probably know about like, uh, damn, what's the name of that one? Harman Kardon is not a sound system. That's the name of a fucking chair. Maybe it is. It is a sound system. Yeah. And what's the chair? Ah, oh, Harman Miller. Herman, Herman Miller. Yeah, Herman, Herman Miller, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Damn, I can't believe I got those mixed up. Uh, weird how that, I made that connection right there. But people who go really deep into cars or music, they're likely to, not likely, but it's more likely for, for them to go deep on the other one than it is for them to go deep on like the culinary arts or something like that, you know? It's rare, it's rare compared to like, cars you'll find that often actually i think cars is just such a beautiful anthropomorphizable um art form that it has a lot of overlap with a lot of other industries as well <clears throat> so it's just a little unique to me how yamaha has made a name for itself in two completely yeah it makes total it makes perfect sense to me the thing about this sort of thing is like it's um i don't know if a business passionate person would understand it, like a company person would understand it but it's, it's for the boys, you know, who get into like a hobby, like gaming guys or PC guys or guitar guys or car guys or all the other guys, right? The only real difference between us is the price points of our hobbies. Like, um, at one point, like my, my homie was into guns, right? But it just became too expensive. So he's like, fuck it. Back to gaming, back to poker, you know, back to playing cards. It's like these hobbies, the only real difference between like everything can be fun. Everything, the, a person's level of patience is the only factor holding people back from learning to enjoy really any kind of hobby. Uh, you can really enjoy anything, but if you have the patience to do so, and if you have less money, you have more patience to enjoy the hobbies because you don't really have a choice. You're going to be forced to have more patience, but yeah separate industries now i'm not implying they're just the price points yamaha pianos are very expensive they're very very expensive but i mean they're not cars and they're at the top of either industry but they're sure a big part of them any musician watching this is very familiar with yamaha and anyone who knows anything about motorcycles knows about yamaha i actually don't know which is more well known i'm sure it depends on the person and where you're from and how you know it's um it's actually so rare that <clears throat> people with different hobbies like this, like the masculine hobbies, that they cross over into other hobbies, that it'll come as a pleasant surprise when you when you realize like, oh shit, they all use the same vocabulary. They use the same vocabulary, but they mean different things in different hobbies, like no replacement for displacement and tuning and things like that. They mean different things for different hobbies, but they use the same words. Because they're good words and they make sense in context. But um, there's a lot of overlap with vocabulary between, between cars and music. Like a surprising amount of overlap. And it's actually, I think the reason why, why there's a lot more in, in cars and music is because 
it's not necessarily that they sell different products. It's not that they sell different commodities. They're similar in that they have the exact the exact same heart and soul, really. Like the same passion drives people to do like it's the same sort of spirit of excellence and excitement, right? The same demographic, I mean. Like I'm trying to explain it in a vague way because like I really can't explain to you how these two fields are actually very similar without going off on like a four hour lecture with all the ins and outs of both technologies. And if you don't have an understanding of how a combustion engine works, then I can't really explain it with words in a way you'll understand uh, until you learn that. But it makes, it does basically the same thing as an instrument. It just generates more heat uh, than sound from vibrations. And it can generate a lot more sound if you wanted it to, if you, you know, do a little muffler delete or, uh, you know, take out the cats, take out the resonator, take, bro, take out everything, straight pipe it. Just, um, yeah. Then, I mean, you could straight pipe a Civic and it'll be louder than a, than a Lamborghini stock at least, but maybe depends on the Lamborghini, I think. But yeah, um, they're basically the same thing at their core. They're basically the same thing. Like if you, if you look at the words in, that people use in both things, like vibrations, like just sound from vibrations and frequencies, like you may not know what a, what a VTEC variable cam head design does, but everyone knows about like how a piano works, right? And how tuning works. Let's say you tune a piano. I mean, as much as pianos can be tuned, they can't really be tuned actually. Um, you just have to get it right the first time. But let's say a manufacturer tunes some studio monitors, right? Like AKG tuning that everyone loves and swears by, or like those Yamaha monitors that everyone uses in every major studio. <clears throat> been using it for so many years. It's literally like 10 feet away from me right now. But one of the most major uh, factors in the output of an engine is the tuning. It's actually the most major output uh, factor of output is the tuning of, of air to fuel ratio and things like that. All you gotta do is really cram as much condensed air as possible plus as much fuel as possible into an engine and that's your output like that's the simplest formula to get your to get your horsepower and your torque and what's the first mod these teenagers do first of all teenagers love making music on these computers they love tuning their instruments and hooking it up to an amp and playing these instruments they all got to know how to tune their instruments what's the first mod that they do when they get their wrx or 86 or mustang or whatever they tune it they chip tune, they stage one. And you'd be blown away as to how similar the process is actually between tuning an instrument and tuning the instrumentation of an engine, really. Like you can, like, I, I, uh, man, I didn't have a Cobb access port, but my homie did. I was going to get one, but I'm like, damn, bro, I'm not going to have this car for that long. I'm not about to spend a thousand dollars on all this shit, but it's literally... You're, you're playing around with with just turning knobs basically about on on like okay how how uh the fuel injectors will work based on different throttle responses and things like that how how strong they'll kick in at certain levels and stuff it's literally like just about the same process and if you look at these like civics with laptops in the passenger seats and you look at it you look at the graphs that they have on there it looks oddly similar to an EQ. It's not. It's it's a it's a torque graph usually or something like that or a horsepower at, based on RPMs or whatever. Um, but these are all products of tuning. And Yamaha right here, they are masters of tuning, masters of tuning. Of course, like they don't actually manufacture a lot of their parts. A lot of their parts are manufactured by different companies, but they're the they're some of the best tuners in the world. Is no no coincidence that um, literally the biggest car company on earth asked them to tune their Halo cars fucking exhaust note, like it's no which is uh, actually I'll, I'll just look it up on YouTube, and you might be like Lexus that's not the biggest car company in the world Toyota is Toyo Lexus is Toyota, um, Lexus LV sound, of course straight pipes. 
Oh man, here. This is the video. Listen, just listen to the sound. Yamaha tuned the sound and they do, it's not necessarily the most natural sound. They kind of funnel in sound from different pipes going into the interior and things like that. And it's, uh, it's kind of cheap and it's not really a fast car, but this is their halo car. This is their car that they meant to go like, we'll do a lot of research development, lose money, sell this supercar and, and use a technology that we learn from this and things that we learn from this to, to build our other cars. Which, like, you look at, like, Lexus LFA. You look at, like, the way this car is designed, right? And then you look at, like, um, uh, uh, Lexus LC500. Like, pay attention to that, and then look at this. So they get their design language from their Halo cars. When Toyota was designing their Halo car, they got Yamaha to do their exhaust. Just listen, listen to their exhaust. They're damn, they're damn good at what they do. That's amazing, dude. That's amazing. Of course, it ends up being like the least controversial pick for best sounding exhaust of any production car in history, right? A lot of other, I think V10s generally are up there. Uh, Carrera GT is up there. Um, I, someone said the Carrera GT had the best sounding exhaust in history. I mean, it'd be hard to dispute, you know? They're all sort of... Um, honestly, I think Mercy Lago is really underrated. Mercy Lago exhaust. But... Uh, no, nah, actually, no. There's a lot of other... The thing is, nobody cares about those exhausts. They're so... They're such beautiful cars, and they have so many other things going for them that nobody really cares about, like... Pagani Zonda exhaust note. Maybe people do. Let me look it up. But let's see. So it's all about tuning. It's all about a, it's, it's it's all the same art form basically. How old you are, your hobbies, obviously. I'd like to take a small survey. In the comments, let me know. When you hear the name Yamaha, do you think of music or motorcycles? And let me I think of tuning. I think of the studio monitors, actually, the speakers. If you guys don't know, monitors uh, monitors are simply things that, that are, they're simply output devices. They're simply computer peripherals that let you monitor what's going on in the computer. So you can say you have a monitor, and usually people, when they talk about that in the tech world, they'll talk about screens. Right, and those are screen monitors. They monitor what's going on in the computer. But there's a, a speaker is also a monitor. It's it's monitoring the audio outputs of the computer. Um, and speakers usually have different tuning to make things sound better. When people talk about audio monitors or sound monitors, which is what people usually say, studio monitors. Actually, you know, people usually say studio monitors. Um, it's it's speakers technically, yeah, but they're separated by the fact that like these monitors are usually tuned specifically for the creation of music usually a studio will have both uh they'll have like a set of like you know like i have these like thx logitech uh you know monitors with a uh, speakers with a sub right underneath where my feet are um for like actually listening to music and then i have the yamahas for making music and listening to it for listening to when i'm making it because it's a it's a very flat sound profile very cold uh robotic unfeeling no no warmth or anything to it no um there's no uh uh it's neutral it's completely neutral. it has a neutral sound profile so it's not like i'm listening to anything bass boosted or v-shaped or whatever you know so that's what i imagine when i think of yamaha let me know why you think that's the case i want to talk about what this company looks like today it's actually two separate company i'll get to that but first I want to take a look at how it all started because it's quite an inspirational story. Okay, look, there. before he gets into that, look, there is not going to be all that much research and development overlap that can be had between the two. I know I, I hyped it up, but really the tuning of an instrument versus the tuning of a, of a engine, there's not, like if you do a lot of research and development into tuning of an instrument, you're not going to, it's not going to translate. It might translate maybe 10% of the research notes will, will carry over and be valuable to the other side. Maybe 10%, if that. But it's still something, you know? And when you're that good, 
it, it's and then it, it has nothing to do with this it has nothing to do with like the fact that like they're good at both and that it can carry over it has everything to do with the fact that like the people who go to work at Yamaha fall into this category of liking both of these passions like that's just what it ends up being because a lot of people I'm I'm one of these people I'd love to you know be an exec at Yamaha I feel like I can get so many cool things done um they both sort of audio and cars they both fall within this category of hobbies that are like hyper objective while also being hyper subjective at the same time even in the same conversations like literally there is a very clear way to measure the quality of audio coming from a pair of headphones and using something like Sonarworks so that you can map out your entire room and set up a proper audio monitor system right studio monitor system and get a completely flat artist intended noise profile out of your hardware even though it's not really artist intended artists are intending you to listen to it with AirPods, but and and when it comes to testing the like objective methods, uh, objective, you know, uh, 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 sh what's the word for it? Measures of a, a car's quality, right? It's very clear, very obvious. Um, there's very, you know, there's set standards. There's good points of references for these things. Like what's a good value? Uh, there's numbers for everything, for horsepower, for whatever. There's material science that has gone into the materials of all these cars. There's safety ratings, um, and for audio, there's you know there's bit rate, there's the hertz rate, there's uh, you know you look at an audio file. Um, I, I, when I say audio file, I think of like the kind of person, but like if you look at like the audio file game, like you might be confused as to why every single audiophile disagrees on like every single thing ever. Like these guys cannot agree on anything for shit because it's like everyone's ears are slightly different and, and everyone's heads has slightly different shapes and everyone you know has different preferences. Everyone's different in the way that they prefer sound to hit their ears. And just in the same way, you know, people could, you could be like, oh, this is a louder exhaust. But exhaust is not a, a clear... It is actually, it's a very clear scalar measurement um, to see like, you know, decibel ratings so that you can give tickets to people in California. But in terms of, um, you know, what people value in cars, bro, it has nothing to do with that at all. It's not only, there's not only a butt dyno, there's also a, a, a ear monitor or whatever, whatever people want to call it, you know, where... Like, yeah, you can look at the numbers of like, oh, this car has this zero to 60 or whatever. But, and, and a lot of times people do use this as like, in the same conversation, they will talk about this as being valuable because it's like measurable and testable and repeatable. And people only do this when things fall in their favor though. People only, like, people don't make this argument when the car that they like is slower. So it's literally an irrelevant argument to make, but that's a topic for a different day. But it's literally why, uh, when this dude got a ride in my WRX on the way to this dude's house, Lambo Doc's house, um, and he he got to ride in his Lamborghini Huracan, and then on the ride back, he's like, yeah, you know what? I'd rather ride in your WRX because it was more fun than his Lamborghini. Like, the, it really, when you really dig down into it, like a real car person, not like a fake car person, that, oh, horsepower, horsepower, horsepower. No, you really dig down into it, People prefer fun cars and that almost nowadays because every car is fast It almost has nothing to do with horsepower anymore. The most fun car like today is probably a Miata. So Damn, I should really get one actually uh, Hold up. I'm gonna I'm put this in a new tab so I don't forget because I want to build one I want to get one bro ASAP Okay, yeah, cool. But, yeah, people have preferences. People prefer different levels of clarity and color and sparkle and body and tones and thump and all that stuff. And 
if you're not if you don't spend time in the studio, you won't really understand what those words mean. I, you might you you're able to take a guess, and you'd probably be right actually. But some of them, there's a lot of vocab words out there that you really only learn when you're in the studio, and you, and it's like a you get to experience it, and you know it when you see it. And some of these words that literally just made up, they're like probably local words. I've never heard thump outside of anywhere but Atlanta. Um, I hear I hear bounce everywhere. I hear wavy everywhere, but I've never heard thump uh, or body. I've never heard body outside of Atlanta either. People make music a bit differently here than they do in other places. But I really can't explain the similarities of these two industries without going into like extreme depth. But when it comes to what makes someone an audiophile versus what makes someone a car guy, ultimately the only real difference is the price points of the hobbies. They're both art forms for the ears. They're art forms not only for the ears, they're art forms for the senses. You could describe it as that because it's like, <clears throat> uh, the culinary arts doesn't have much overlap. That's because it's an art form of the taste, sense, and smell, and sight as well. But the reason why there's so much overlap between music and cars is because it's visual and auditory. And it's actually, if you really get down to it, it's more auditory than visual, even for cars. People are like, oh, I love the look of the cars. Nah, dude, the sound of the cars literally matters more to car guys than the look of the car. Because uh, you're not going to be looking at the car when you're inside driving it. So what, what really matters is the sound and the feel. You look at the feel of the car, people want to have, people want to be thrown back into their seats. People want to go around tight corners. People like that feel. In the same way, people like being in the studio, they like the feeling of the bass, you know, shaking them to their core, you know? So it's it's the same sort of uh, demographic the only difference is the price points. Like literally the main component of both industries, of both hobbies, in terms of like technology, is it's called drivers. That's a coincidence. That that did not mean to that's not supposed to I mean kind of not really, because drivers is meant to they they drive the software. But yeah, that, that I mean drivers exist in every other it exists all over tech, so it's not like um an audio. I actually know it is born mainly from sound cards and from audio drivers from different audio sources because it's not an easy thing you know for uh for for screens it's all digital you can send a digital signal to a digital screen and it'll output a digital whatever right but for audio you have to convert it to an analog signal at some point in order to get a speaker to physically shake to create those sounds so um or rather a driver you have to get the driver to physically vibrate and move to create those sounds but it's, yeah, drivers is a bit irrelevant. But they are very similar. So, yeah, let's see. It takes place all the way back in the late 1800s and concerns a young, industrious man named Torakusu Yamaha. And obviously, that's where the name Yamaha comes from. He started off as a watchmaker, even owned his own watchmaking business for a while. The business didn't work out, and he started a job repairing medical equipment. The job would bring him to different towns, and one of these towns was very isolated. A school there, how well these would sell throughout Japan. Japan. Soon after, he was able to create his own prototype organ. He then needed to deliver it to the Music Institute, and to do that- Hey look, he shows a tuning fork right here. At he sound unreal, but this is what happened. When he got there, the organ was criticized for its poor tuning, so- There we go, there we go. In response, Mr. Yamaha spent four months full-time studying music theory and tuning and that's why the company does what it does. That's why it's so successful. Because they're all about tuning. They're all about sound. They're all about, you know, striking the iron while it's hot with, an, you know, hitting, hitting metal to an anvil. That's what they're all about, really. Until he was finally able to create a proper organ. That organ led to a small organ manufacturing company that led to the company that we know today. Here's the logo Yamaha uses that hasn't changed much for three tuning forks. That's crazy. I never noticed the past 100 years. It can be a little hard to tell what it is, but it's actually three tuning forks intersecting. And it that's so crazy. What a beautiful logo with the hexagon in the middle and everything. That's amazing. What a logo, man. What a logo. It's inspired by those four months of hard work spent learning about tuning. This is an amazing story. If there's any Hollywood screenwriters watching this, 
please make this your next project. All the parts are there, but um, do. Does that wait? What does that say? Oh, don't touch my mints, kid. Okay. I thought that said Miata for a second. I was looking at it from afar, and I'm like, there's no fucking way, bro. There's no fucking way. Another thing where we don't learn it's actually the origin of Yamaha until the very end. Maybe refrain from calling him Mr. Yamaha until the final scene. Not to spoil- That would be cool, that would be cool. The Dark Knight Rises, but I think you know what I'm saying. And since that movie- Ah, uh, yeah, that's Robin, by the way. Spoiling it. ...doesn't exist yet, let me try to pull a few lessons from it. Keep an eye out. This was a medical equipment repairman just by- I think it was pretty obvious, like, even- you know, halfway through the movie, like, oh yeah, this is the guy coming to save all the people who are trapped underground. Like, this is this is Robin, obviously. Chance, looking at an organ, it doesn't sound like something that would be significant, but he made it significant. It's a little strange to think about it like this, but if that organ in a school in a secluded town in Japan didn't need repairs, there would be no Yamaha company today follow through. He didn't go home and tell his friends how someone should start an organ manufacturing company. He did it. You know how I just told you someone should make a movie about this? Perfect example of me ignoring <laughs> this lesson. I'll admit it, it's a little embarrassing because Mr. Yamaha would have had this in pre-production by now. Be determined. You don't carry an organ prototype across the mountains unless you're determined. In persistence, that prototype wasn't even that good. It took four months of intense studying to learn how to make it good. I'm sure we can learn more from this story. You could tell how much I respect it, but we have to move on. We're not even in the 20th century yet. Within two years, Yamaha's company 200 and the since in the year 1900. Ah, since. There we go. So he's getting into that business. They made their first up. Since, since is literally what I'm talking about here. When it comes to, if somebody uses a synthesizer, chances are they're not necessarily a car guy, but they are a music person. If they if they prefer synthesizers over everything else, because synthesizers are not uh, subjective. They don't have a soul to them. They can, they can, but it's it all starts off with a sine wave. All you're doing is making a e, just the default sound, and then you just manipulate it from there. Bright piano. Two years later, they made their first grand piano. You can see how at this point they were up and running. So I'd like to skip ahead to the 1940s because that was a big decade for the company. Early in the decade, they started making guitars, but then in the middle of the decade, they were forced to stop making all musical instruments because of the war. Their focus turned to making fuel tanks and wing parts, but they made a big return after the war. Late in the decade, the Japanese government made music musical education mandatory for children. Damn, that's gotta be good for business. And as it turns out, that was great news for a manufacturer of musical instruments. Up until the 1950s, Yamaha hadn't made much of an impact in the United States, and it was their motorcycles that helped change that. They started making motorcycles and started marketing them in the United States. Yeah, whether or not there's even R&D development that can be overlapped, which there probably can be, but whether or not that's even a thing, like you can even, even as simple as like, let's say you have a software, right? And you have the visualizations of tuning um, mapped out, like mapping software uh, on a computer. You can use the same front end for both. Like you could literally just use the same front end for like, you know, uh, when, it, when, it, when that dude is using that, um, that like tuning thing for uh, like he's he's playing a guitar and he's hooked up the, the thing to the ground that he uses his foot to step on, clicks a little button so that he can show the notes for tuning and he, he's tuning the instrument. You can use the same front end on that device as you do on, you know, whatever software people use for for their laptops that they hook up to their engines to, to their uh, um, what's it called? You know, what I'm talking about access ports, basically. States. During this period, and many years after, the average American would likely identify them as a motorcycle company, and really knew very little about their presence in music. I'll make another big jump, and skip to what Yamaha- Yeah, the, I think the real reason why he did it is because, like, the dude himself was probably passionate about both.
Like, it makes sense. If someone is passionate about one, they're probably going to be passionate about the other. Yamaha looks like today, so we can get a better understanding. Because tuning is, is a bit different. I, I imagine it like this. Okay, there's this one time I had, to make, I had to make a logo for someone. They found a logo online, and they were like, it was warped. It was a warped, weird logo. And they wanted me to take the logo and unwarp it and make it flat again. Now, what I could do is I could go into AutoCAD and redraw the logo exactly how it was, right? Um, except it's just flat. However, what I did instead, because I'm a I'm an artist, what I did is I took the image, I tried to put it in Photoshop and tried to use Liquify to unwarp the image again to make like a more human-ish element. That's what tuning is. You take an analog instrument that literally makes noises by slamming you know, pieces of wood against strings of metal. Um, and then you use that to somehow, you using it to tune, tuning it is what'll turn it into a beautiful piece of music and turn it into something that you can use to create something that's greater than some of its parts, right? The, the whole is greater than some of its parts. Tuning is what you use to basically liquefy and warp something into something else. But creating that thing again from scratch, which is what I had to do, um, is like synthesizing it. It's resynthesizing. It's re it's creating it from scratch again, and there's no art in that. I mean, there is, but it's not the same. So someone who enjoys this kind of artistic form would also enjoy cars, because cars are all, I mean, not anymore, but at least the fun cars are all analog of the scope of this company. Up until this point, I've been trying to keep it simple by treating it like it's one company, but it's really- That's interesting. The meta of both have evolved in the same way too, because now all music is no longer analog, it's all digital. And now cars, they're not analog anymore, they're all digital. They're all automatic braking, automatic lane keep assist, automatic, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Traction control, stability control, all that stuff. It's all, the car is driving itself for you, you know? Rather than analog, no power steering, no uh, nothing like that. You gotta shift the gears yourself and all that, you know? Really two, basically. There's Yamaha Corporation and there's Yamaha Motor Company. The company that started in the 1800s and deals with music is Yamaha Corporation. The company with the motorcycles is Yamaha Motor Company. It's been like this since the 1950s. Yamaha Corporation would traditionally own about a third of the other company, but it's been slowly decreasing. Today, it's down to less than 10%. Now, first, looking at Yamaha Corporation. The biggest part of their business is exactly what you would expect, musical instruments. They make up 63% of all sales, and they come mostly from Japan, followed by North America, then Europe. These numbers are pretty reflective of their overall sales by region as well. So for anyone in America or Europe or somewhere else who think of Yamaha as being a big brand name, they're much bigger in Japan as you may have already expected. Their next biggest segment is audio equipment. I've neglected to even mention this until now, but it's 28% of all sales, making it a very significant part of their business. This is stuff like AV receivers, speakers. Okay, I'm shocked. I thought this stuff was the majority, because that's all I see, but damn, I'm surprised systems, amplifiers, other, which includes golf clubs, among other things. Huh. That's everything you see, hobby stuff would know from masculine hobbies yamaha corporation now for yamaha motor company this of course is where you find the motorcycles but there's also a lot more but motorcycles like jet skis like jet skis do make up 62 percent of their sales according in fact every time i it the yamaha jet skis are very uh distinguishable from other ones because they're the ones that shoot up the water in that like you know you know what i'm talking about they like shoot like a stream of water out while the jet ski's moving According to surveys conducted by Yamaha Motor, the worldwide demand for motorcycles was around 54 million in 2017, and they provided around 5.4 million of them. Damn. So you can say they were responsible for about 10% of all motorcycle sales. Yeah, they're huge. They're huge. A lot of... Man, I want a motorcycle too, but mm, I don't want to die. Next, there's marine engines, which are boat engines, of which the world demanded 820,000 of, and Yamaha provided 301,000, which is about 37%. Once again, engines. 
10% of all sales. There's personal watercraft, which is like a jet ski or wave runner. Wave runner is actually the name of the- Yeah, 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 you see the, the uh, what's it called, the stream of water? Product Yamaha provides. The world demanded 97,000 of them, of which Yamaha provided 43,000, about 43% of all sales. I don't wanna go through all this for each product, but I think it's- Looks like 40, no, that's 43%, yeah. Interesting. So a few more. Snowmobiles. The world demanded 128,000 of them. Hobbies. Of which Yamaha provided 11,000. For golf cars. The world demanded 181,000 of them, where Yamaha provided 65,000. They also make swimming pools and ATVs, generators, snow throwers. They make products for men. Like real men, bro. Not boys. Not... Men who are feminine, who are in touch with their feminine side? Nah, bro. They make products for men. As they call them, I call them snow blowers. Also, electrically power assisted bicycles. Never mind. I guess they make products for feminine men as well. Electric wheelchairs, automobile engines. No, yeah, no, they're expanding. Industrial use, unmanned helicopters. Damn. And I'm not even naming everything. I just brought up many different products where Yamaha- So they're just getting into fields where the workers who work there and the executives are passionate about those fields. They're products that they would buy for fun. Like they're games, they're IRL games that are not board games and they're not video games, but they're real life games like golf and stuff like that. They're IRL games. That's what they're selling. Tools to play IRL games. And, you know, occasionally, it's not often, it's weird, it's not often, um, but occasionally, enough to where it does make sense, people overlap from field to field. That is a significant manufacturer. I mean, bro, every time I buy a car, I have to upgrade sound system. I've never bought a car without also, I mean, my first car, but I didn't buy it. That was a hand-me-down. I've never bought a car, like all, my last three cars, literally within the week of buying it, I had already done hella research on what the best sound system was for it, and I had already purchased it. So yeah. Sure. Bringing it back to the beginning, they do make musical instruments, and they do make motorcycles. Yes, like, you could just say they make musical instruments and have these both on screen, it would make sense. There's two separate companies that carry the Yamaha name, and those are the primary products for each company. But each of them also has an extensive catalog of other products. You can find a golf club with their name on it, as well as a swimming pool. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about one company, or I suppose two companies, manufacturing such a wide variety of products like this. At first glance, I would think it would just lead to a bunch of bad products. They make so many different things, how can they give proper attention to any- No, no, that would be the case if they made all the instruments, if they made trumpets and all this stuff, then it, I would be worried about quality control. But if it's all these people like basically doing all this stuff, the, the sort of, um, it's basically just tuning company, it's just tuning company, but Look, I wouldn't buy a Yamaha pool. Maybe, maybe they just have, maybe their business is simply going into a field with an extreme depth of understanding. Maybe they took the philosophy of the first guy and just applied it to everything else because when they got into jet skis, they're like, okay, we understand the properties of water. We understand how to make the best possible turbines to get the most efficient engines in these jet skis and manipulate the water as best as possible. Boom, there we go. We understand water. Let's make pools, you know? So maybe they're just, it's kind of just going off on tangents, branching out here and there, just based on what their expertise is. One of them, but with Yamaha, that's not really the case at all. They make quality shit, bro, everywhere across the board. It's all quality. They've done it in a deliberate way, where most of what they make isn't too much of a stretch from, well, either music or motorcycles. Can you think of another company that operates like this? Someone that's one of the biggest names in two unrelated industries. Oh, and let me know if you plan on writing a script for that movie. I don't need any monetary payment for giving. Let's see what people have to say in the comments. How they got into motorcycles to begin with. They built pianos. That also got them good at woodworking. During the war, they were called upon to use work, woodworking skills to make propellers. Aha, propellers. That leads into jet skis for boats. Yeah, there you go. They began putting propellers to engines and started repairing them and tinkering with how engines worked. 
their own engine started making their own. That's a Yamaha motor company. There are plenty of them in Japan. Mitsubishi, banking, real estate, electronics, car company. Yeah, I guess Japanese companies would be a... Because Japanese companies are thorough. They're, they're, if there's one thing you could say about Japanese companies, they are thorough. Once again, baking, real estate, heavy machinery, chemicals, cutting tools, Sony. Uh, Sony is very related. Sony is is entertainment. Look, electronics, video games, movies, and now... Oh, insurance. I didn't know about that. Um, Se Psycho, Seiko, Epson, watches and printers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about that. Uh, brothers, sewing machines and printers. Not super unrelated. Never heard of this. Ceramics and electronics. I'm a musician. I love Yamaha. They also put Ford Taurus... A, a six six cylinder motor that goes down in Ford history. They make good engines. Uh, Mitsubishi. Fool, you can tune both of them. See? A lot of kitchen appliances to military grade firearms. Uh, the synthesizer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know about this. Um, nobody uses it anymore. I'm not with the shit like that, but. Yeah, there you go. You forgot to mention how Yamaha was hired to tune the exhaust on the Lexus LFA. They didn't just tune it. They made the whole thing, basically. The most beautiful exhaust notes ever. Also, I started playing... A, oh, they do make trumpets. Never mind. And I own three of their motorcycles. Damn. It's a cross-plane R1. Yeah, so... So people are aware. People, people know about this. 